For the bottom of the wall, we use these small levers to lift up the piece and get a pretty snug joint in the middle of the wall. Hey, Dean, what did we decide to do about this ledge? I don't remember. Uh, an oak shelf, I think, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ledges like this are typical in walkout basements. This is where the 12-inch block turns into 6-inch framing. Now, we could drywall this area, but it's not nearly as durable if you start using it as a shelf. That's why we'll put a three-quarter inch oak board. We used nails around the edges of the drywall when we first hung it. Now we have to add more fasteners. And to do that, we use a drywall screw gun and screws. How many fasteners you use depends on several things. Whether you're using screws or nails, whether you run the sheets parallel to the framing or perpendicular how far apart your framing members are, and how thick your drywall is. Normally, we start hanging the walls once the ceiling's in, but many times in basements you'll have soffits to deal with. So we'll want to get these done before we tackle the walls. We'll start by rocking the bottoms, and then we'll take on the vertical parts. Here. Right. Let's see what we've got here. Got it there, Joel? Okay, Joel, let's shift it down here. You end up there. There we go. Okay. That's pretty solid. This is a lifeblood of drywall taping. It's called joint compound or taping compound. Yeah, but everyone calls it mud. And because of the type of drywall we're using in here, the first layer will be called the joint coat. But before we do any taping, we'll install the metal corner bead. This reinforces the corner, the area where drywall typically will get damaged eventually. With the corner bead on, we can start with the mud. Now this drywall has a rounded edge. This allows us to put a little extra mud in the joint. This is a quick drying joint compound, and this extra bit of mud will make the joint stronger. On butt joints, where the ends of different sheets meet, we want to notch the joint out with a knife so that we've got some space for the joint coat. is called the joint coat, and it's only necessary if you use round-edged wallboard. Once the joint coat's dried, we'll apply what's called the tape coat. And to do this, we use ready-mix joint compound. You want to get that in there? This consists of a thin layer of mud in the joint. Then, a layer of joint tape gets embedded in this. Finally, we run a knife over it all to flatten it out. corners get a tape coat too. Take a piece of tape and fold it in the middle to create a crease. Many tapes have a ridge in the center designed for this specifically. The tape gets embedded into the corner by running the knife down each wall. Next, we mud in around the corner beads. And this is the time when we cover up the heads of the nails and screws with a layer of mud. Our initial coat was a quickset compound, which dried in only a couple hours. So we were able to put on our tape coat right away. Now that the tape coat's done, we'll let it set overnight, and then we'll put on our next coat. Taping our drywall joints is a four-step process. We've done the joint coat and the tape coat. The next two coats are meant to smooth out the joints. And the first of these coats is called the fill coat, or the second coat. Although for us, it's really the third coat. The theory now is to make the joints as smooth as possible. So each coat will be a little wider than the one before it. And we'll start by using a six inch knife for the fill coat. We cover all the joints in this coat. We also cover the nail and screw heads and the corner beads. Now, before we apply the last coat, which is also called the third coat or the finish coat, we've scraped off any ridges or tool marks with a taping knife, and we have a smooth surface. 
Then I use a 10 or 12 inch taping knife to spread out the mud. This means I can feather the edges out about two inches farther than we did on the previous coat. Some tapers like to thin out the mud for this last coat. This makes it a little easier to get an extremely smooth surface. And we hit all of our favorite spots on this coat. Joints, corner beads, inside corners, and nail heads. When your drywall taping is done, there will be a lot of cleanup to do. And it's particularly important to scrape the excess mud off the floor.